and welcome to another special story time and craft with the Oakbrook Public Library. I am Miss Margo and I'm so happy that you're here for our Winter Wonderland themed story time. Before we get started and read our two books, we're going to sing our hello song. You ready? Here we go. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Beautiful singing. Okay, our first book of the day is called Bear Snores On. This book is by Karma Wilson and the author is Jane Chapman. And grownups, if you haven't heard of this book series, it is so much fun to read. It comes in verse and one of my favorite things about it is that it has different animals in it than we would normally see in a woodland storybook. And a lot of them are found in the Midwest, which is really cool. Always like seeing new animals for our little ones. Okay. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day and he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter pat, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks too damp, too damp, dank, too dark, so he lights wheat twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pit pop and the wind doesn't snap, but the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare pops in. Ho, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips, we slurps, hare bit burps, big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger. Scuttles by, sniff, sniffs at the air. I smell yummy yums, perhaps we can share. I brought honey nuts, Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up and cozy down and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chop, crunch, but the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor when a wren and a raven flutter through the door. Mutter, mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare strokes the fire, mouse seasons stew, then a small pepper fleck makes the bear a chew! He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping and I have had none. And he whimpers and he moans and he wails and he groans and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn. We can brew more tea. Bear gulps, 
bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, bear can't sleep. But his friends snore on. And that's the end. What'd you guys think? I hope you liked meeting that bear. What did you think of that story? I hope you liked it. Okay, before we read our next and final book, we are going to do a little rhyme together. So for this, we're gonna need our bear houses, which are layers, as we talked about in Bear Snores On. We're gonna call these layers. And how many are there? Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. There's five and they all have a different color. And inside one of these layers is a sleepy bear. We're gonna find out which one has a bear behind it. So before we go in, we're gonna practice. We're gonna knock on the door. You can either hit a table or you can click your tongue like this. Can you do that? Let's do it together. All right, so together we're going to say, Sleepy Bear, Sleepy Bear, are you in the pink layer? Let's find out. <gasps> no bear. Let's try again. Sleepy Bear, Sleepy Bear, are you in the green layer? No bear. Sleepy bear, sleepy bear, are you in the yellow lair? Let's knock. Nope, no bear. Sleepy bear, sleepy bear, are you in the purple lair? Let's find out, let's knock on the door. All right. The bear has to be in this last one. Let's find out. Sleepy bear, sleepy bear, are you in the blue lair? <gasps> Look, it's a sleepy little bear. He's hibernating for the winter. Aw, we'll keep the bear in the lair because I like looking at him. He's so cute. Okay. Before we get on with our craft, we're going to read one more story. And this one is kind of a mix between a story, which is a fiction book, and a fact book, which we would call in the library, we would say it's nonfiction, which means it's not a story, it's real life. Because there's lots of facts in this book. It's called Over and Under the Snow. The author is Kate Messner and Christopher Silas Neal did all of the artwork. And once again, I like these books because they have pictures of things that I think we could see if we went on a nature walk in our area. Okay. Over the snow I glide into woods frosted fresh and white. Over the snow, a flash of fur a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Under the snow is a whole secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them now. Look, there they are skiing. And who is it? What kind of animal is that? You're right, it's a squirrel. Over the snow I glide past beech trees rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss out of sight. Look, Dad says, tracks, tracks always tell a story. 
Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust, up a hill, under a tree. An oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Something must have slept there. Under the snow, deer mice doze. They huddle up close up against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. Can you see the mice? They're over here in the corner. Over the snow I climb, digging in my edges so I don't slide back down. Under the snow, voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. Over the snow, I swoosh, down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, whoops. Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from a shelter of spruce, which is this kind of tree. Almost invisible, she smooths her fur, a coat of winter white. Over the snow, I glide past, past reeds where tadpoles play tag in springtime. Under the snow, fat bullfrogs snooze. They dream of sun-warm days back when they had tails. Over the snow, I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. Under the snow, beavers, nons, aspen bark, settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? Over the snow, stop a sound. We stand like statues carved in ice till a bushy-tailed fox steps from a thicket. Tips his ear to the ground, listens, listens, listens still, and leaps up onto the snow after an invisible dinner. He paw his paws scratch away to find the mouse he heard scritch, scritch, scratching along underneath, under the snow. Over the snow I glide, a full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk wakes for a meal. Bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. Over the snow, I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises, warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dogs sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick sticky marshmallow from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in the flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drones away December all alone. She'll rule a new colony in the spring. Over the snow, I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery soft flakes. Look at those snowflakes falling. You can see them falling from the sky and in the, in snow below. Under the covers, I snuggle deep, I drift into dreams of cuddling deer mice and slumbering frogs, hungry beavers and tunneling voles, drowsy bears and busy squirrels, and the secret kingdom under the snow. And there's some facts in the back about all the different animals that we saw in the book. And I will say that we have over and under the snow during the winter, and we have over and under the pond that we can look at in the spring and summer, if you would like. All right, I really hope that you enjoyed this story time with me. Next, we're going to make a craft together. And remember, you can pick up these craft supplies starting today while supplies last. So we won't have them forever, okay? I hope that you are ready to paint a winter wonder landscape. For this craft, you will receive one piece of blue paper, one bucket of paint, some Q-tips, a paintbrush, some snowflake stickers, a little moon, and of course, a beautiful winter tree. What you will need from home is a glue stick. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with where I want the horizon to be. So where I want the snow to end and the sky to begin. 
I'm probably going to have it right about here. So I'm going to paint a little bit behind where my tree is going to be planted. I'm going to use my Q-tip and I'm going to just use it to make little dabs of snow behind where I might put my tree. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and start dabbing snow in the other parts as well. Did you know that you could paint with Q-tips? In the past, I've painted with leaves from my backyard and paint pens and paint daubers. There's lots of things you can paint with. All right, just gonna rest this here for the time being. I've got my tree and I think that I want it to go this way. So what I'm gonna do is on the back of the tree, I'm going to take my glue stick and keep in mind, you don't have to use a glue stick. You could use regular glue or my favorite scotch tape. It's completely up to you. But I happen to have a glue stick around. You might wanna wait till your snow's a little dry, but I think it's okay if we put this guy there right about now. All right. Don't forget to put the cap back on. There you go. And we're gonna keep painting the foreground of our landscape. I'm gonna have a little bit of snow on the bottom of the tree. bit of snow on my tree branches. Wherever I think snow would land, I'm just putting a little bit of snow there. How does that look? Now, I think I'm going to put my moon shining down right about here. I like this because it reminds me a little bit of um, Starry Night, the way yellow and blue look together. And we're going to make some snowflakes coming down because it's a wintry night. There, what do you think? If you want, you can make some little swirls of snow to really make it look like it's a windy night. But if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Whatever makes you happy with the painting. Okay, and as a final touch, I'm gonna use some of my sparkle stickers so that we have some individual snowflakes falling down. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the snow to fall so that I can go sledding to 
Do you like sliding in the snow? All right, and there we have it, our beautiful winter landscape. Now, keep in mind you were also given a paintbrush. If you want, you can mix up the paint that you have at the bottom and fill it in, or you could use the paintbrush to kind of, you know, make your little wispies a little more whimsical. It's all up to you and what you think will make the painting your own. You kind of mix this up. Or you could leave it with our little dots. All right. All right, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed doing our winter wonderland landscape together. Make sure you let that dry before you do anything with it. And I also hope that you enjoyed reading our two stories together. If you enjoyed this, story time and craft go ahead and like this video on our youtube channel and subscribe to that channel you can go ahead and follow us on instagram and facebook and you can follow us on twitter and i hope to see you again next time before i go i would like to remind you that we are running a, a craft contest here at the library so if you have a photo of a completed craft that you've made from our YouTube videos or you just picked up at the library, you can submit that either online or in person and you'll be entered to win a $25 Amazon gift card. All right, thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.